So, I've been reading Nishitani, uh, one of the Japanese philosophers from the Kyoto School. And man, when I read him, I, I think I feel the most like an American. <laughs> it's like the American trying to understand this concept of, well, not the, the, that, the non-concept of emptiness or nothing. It's so slippery. Right when I think I got it, I'm like, oh yeah. Like, I finally get it, the nothing, the empty, the, and then I start, like my next thought will be like, yeah, I, I bet I can like turn a profit on this or something. However, something is, I think, kind of slipping through the cracks in a good way. You know, in this, in this kind of contemplation. And what I would say, it seems like the East really has, um, for a very long time, a deep, deep intuition about. And it's the sense of emptiness is is one of the, one of the parts about the understanding of emptiness is it's not like something, right? That then isn't, therefore it's nothing. It's not the absence of something. Emptiness is form, and form is emptiness. So there's this, there's this place in which that rock there, in its rockhood, is precisely not rock. It's very paradoxical in, in some sense, but yet there's a way in which I'm we can understand it, it's one of those things that become really, really obvious, like it's been obvious the whole time. In fact, you're, you're not understanding it, was predicated on it. <laughs> Even you're not understanding emptiness, was in some sense made possible by the emptiness. So in one sense, as I sit here, right, and I'm looking at the, at the water, and if we look at it like this, it's like, if we say that the, we say that the water is space. And let's say that the waves or time. And if we say that the pattern upon which the waves, time, and the water, space, the pattern that that makes is knowledge. So right now, the, the water is space. The waves, time. The patterns that time makes in space is knowledge. <laughs> 